Hello, hello, and welcome to another art video. I hope everything is really, really good where you are. And if you're new here, welcome. If you're one of my regulars, welcome back. I'm so, so happy to see you again. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. And um, yeah, I've got a fun one for you today, actually. I had a really nice bit of happy mail last week. A company called Lightwish got in touch and asked me if I would like to test their pastel pencils. And of course, I'm never going to say no to testing an art product, especially when I haven't used an awful lot. And pastel pencils fall very neatly into that category. So then this gorgeous little tin turned up and it is... Uh, it contains 24 chalk pastel colour pencils, which, yeah, very much my jam. So um, I will show you. I'm going to do a swatch, a fairly quick swatch, and then I'm going to show you how I might use them in a sketch. So let's just unbox. I did have a play on the weekend, I'm not going to lie, because I'm very new to this. And I thought, well, not. I mean, <laughs> new to pastel pencils, that is, of course, um, and new to this brand. Never heard of Lightwish, never heard of Naomi. And, but, it, you know, it's beautifully packaged. I really quite like that. I like these little sort of handles for getting the layers out. And there's another nice layer underneath adore the colors right off the bat adore the colors i'm not a bright person you know bright color person i'm going to stick my neck out here and say that i'm probably never going to ever spend money on a neon color in ever ever and ever <laughs> i think i can say that quite um quite confidently but these muted colors absolutely love them and just looking, I think right off the bat, if I had to suggest any improvement, I would like a, a few more greens. But apart from that, no problems with this color range. Absolutely beautiful. And the few more greens is not really even important since you can mix them on the paper and you can do some different effects with them. Now, before we get into the swatch for those, oh, I must say too, before I forget, I really like the way this has been thoughtfully designed because you look at it and you think, well, how on earth am I going to get those out? There's a little indentation on the bottom of each one. And if you poke the end of the pencil, it's just so easy to remove. As you can see, there's a little sort of trough there. I'm not quite sure if you can see that on camera. But yeah, there's a, just a little bit there, just enough that if you poke the end of the pencil, it will come up and allow itself to be removed. So I really like that. It shows a bit of thought. And I like it when manufacturers put thought into how their product is going to be used because the colours are really important. The feel is important. And if you have a look at the pencils themselves, I like the fact that they're finished on the ends, which a lot of high-end pencils are. There's a nice wooden barrel. It feels good to hold it as well. Um, the light fast rating is written on there. It's fairly easy to understand. Five stars is excellent. This one's got four and a half, so it's pretty excellent. So there's that. There are no colours on there, only a number. So again, if I was to make a teensy suggestion, just a colour name might be nice because I think we respond to colour names sometimes better than numbers, especially for people who have had a horror of maths in their past. So, you know, very small point because we can all cope with the fact that we can see the colours and there's a nice, reasonably accurate colour dip at the back here. So you can see what colour you've got. And uh, yeah, the light fast rating, that is super, super useful. I love that addition to it. So that's really good. So yeah, thought has gone into these. They feel lovely to use and they're easy to use. They're slightly thicker than usual, the um, chalk in the middle, so that's also good. Now, speaking of using, I had a bit of a play, very, very quick sketches on the weekend. Um, this one first, just some messing around with the colours. Now, this one, even though I'm a mixed media artist, and you'll see that if you look at the rest of my videos, mostly I'm a mixed media artist, but this time I decided to try and just use the product as it is, and this is just the pencils. A couple of different techniques I've used, so I couldn't resist that. 
and they're probably not used the way proper pastel artists use them. For example, this lovely picture on the tin is done by a person who actually uses pastel pencils just as pastel pencils. Whereas I see them in the wider context of the other art materials that I use and how would they fit in with that. So, for example, watercolour, gouache, coloured pencil, fine liners, acrylic markers, those are things that I use every single day. And when I buy a new art product, I don't want to change my habits of a lifetime, stop being a mixed media artist and all of a sudden use something um, out of context by itself. That's not what I want to do. So it has to fit in with the family. I've adopted new things now, so this new adoption has to fit in the fam with the family that's already there. So, yeah, I, qu I really quite like the experience, and they're very, very good for doing quick abstractions. You know, these buildings, they're not real. This place probably doesn't exist, but its it works out really well um, for texture, and texture rules my life. I love texture in my work. So if you do too, really quite good product. Uh, my second one was this one here and this one I've done as a mixed media piece just to show you there's not a lot of difference I mean they're both pictures with a building in it and some trees and some people that sort of thing whereas this one is pretty much all the product this one has got some Tombow markers a couple of my Zig clean color markers as well a fine liner and some other bits and pieces here in the front and I also did some mixing here because I started with the green but I wanted deep colour. I like deep dramatic colour because if I put that sort of deep colour in there, I can get quite a light, um, you know, it brings out the highlights elsewhere and so forth and give you a perspective of standing in the trees, looking out over a sunny meadow that happens to have some sort of large house in the background and, of course, the other trees. So that's what I did to have a play, quite like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a sped up squat swatch of these and then we can talk about that and then I'm going to show you a little sketch and it's going to be the mixed media type since that's what we are and I'll show you how I used them. the story so far this is the first layer and as you can see the colors are really muted earthy the sorts of things I love if I had have invented these colors myself I could not be happier there's not a lot of dust as you can see it's a little bit and of course the swatches will smudge just let me get rid of some of that dust it's not very much dust at all I'm using my Stillman and Burn uh, mixed media uh, sketchbook here for these and yeah it's they've done very well indeed the coverage is good good pigment payoff they smudge but not excessively it they do what you would expect pastel pencils to do so yeah I'm quite happy with that I think if again looking at this selection objectively the only yellow is this beautiful mustard yellow and I can't help thinking that something a little bit lighter may be good. However, as I said, you can mix them. So, you know, for example, in a situation like this, you might take the pastel yellow that you have here, the mustard yellow, I would call that, light mustard. Like it's a little bit of um, dust there. And even though yellow is a primary colour and you can't really mix a primary colour, you can indeed take what you've got and change it with light or dark. So, for example, you could add an orange to it, which will change it quite subtly, sort of a glaze of it. Or you can go with a white. Let me grab the white here. Sorry about my arm there. Um... Yeah, and you can lighten it a little bit with that. It's not excessive. One thing you're not doing is changing the base colour with this. You're just modifying the colour. For example, if I can grab my pencil here and you can see the difference there with this coloured pencil, you're never going to achieve that. It's just not going to happen. However, you can play with what you've got slightly and use the dust to 
make effects and so forth. These smudge beautifully, actually. They don't smudge excessively, and they're very, very easy to fix. Either with a, um, you know, any of the pastel fixatives will work. And I always do that when I'm working in layers with any sort of soft pastels. Normally, the sort of soft pastels I'm using are things like this one here. And they can be quite dusty and they can be quite messy. You don't want to be going over pastels with your felt tip pens, uh, markers and things like that because sometimes the felt tip can get clogged and if you're using something like a Pigma Micron, Pigma Micron are brilliant but they're very unforgiving. So if you're wanting to go over and do the sort of fine detail that I've actually done here in this picture, you're not going to get that very easily because um, the felt tip will clog up with the pastel dust so sealing it between layers is really really super important but yeah that's the first half the only like I said the only thing I would like to see there is a slightly brighter yellow um, I can't actually work out which of the colors I would take out so that I had that yellow instead because they're all really nice so I'm going to be horrible here and say I would like an extra rather than a substitution right let me grab the next lot out and we shall resume I'll speed the next bit up as well and um, yeah I'll come back to you at the end Just let me get rid of the dust there. I again, I love all these. I would, this is not my sort of green, however, I can make it into my sort of green, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. I would swap out another green for this purple because these purples are far nicer, or well, that purple is far nicer. And this, yeah, really, that's just my humble opinion here. If I had to swap, I would want to lose that and have this one a bit more muted. But again, what you can do with these is if you have an area of colour and you want to mute a green down, remember green is made from yellow and blue, and the third primary is red, and that's the one that's not used to make the green, so that's the one you use to mute it down slightly. And you can get a better green that way. It's not 100% keen on going over itself, but it will do it. And as you can see, that green is slightly muted version of that one. So that's how I would get around that. It's not worth panic a bit, panicking about. It's a nice set and you'll get this with every set of colours. There is never, I've never seen, well, no, I don't think I've ever seen a set where I've loved absolutely all of them. Um, there's always one that you wish was slightly different. And like I said, it is all worth it for this amazing indigo blue, which again, over the top, you can do things with. That would work even better if you were to fix it in between layers. Right. And you can, of course, erase with a cloth if you want to get rid. If you don't want to get rid, then leave them you know, and fix over the top. So those are the swatched colours. I really, really like the selection. I've got nothing there. Like I said, apart from the few things I've mentioned, most of them, they're just beautiful muted earth tones. Yep, couldn't get better than that. Right, so I have roughed out a slight sketch here. And before I get to that, I would like to show you something that pastel pencils can do that you may not be aware of and it involves, not wanting to give you a spoiler there, but it involves a brush and water. These things are water soluble, which means that you can do all sorts of things with them. Let's go back to this blue, for example. If you put, you're just sort of colouring in your area, as you'll see in a second, then add some water to that some brands are better than others but if you're very lucky and in this we seem to be quite lucky you can get painterly effects and inky type washes with your pastel pencils and if you then I'm just going to blot this to make it a bit quicker 
and dry it off with my trusty heat tool. When you dry that off, you can then go over the top. And quite often, if you're out and about and you don't have a can of fixative with you, this will slightly fix it too. As you can see, it's not coming off very much at all. And that is a really, really big bonus with these sorts of pencils. So for example, you can then go over them with others. You can go over them with the same one, that sort of thing, and add layers. And that's how you can achieve sort of depth of color and things like that. So I shall get organized here and we'll do our sketch next. The sketch I've put together here is really quite simple. It's just a couple of buildings, so very, very few needs. Um, start off with a light blue for the sky, which seems fairly ubiquitous. Just get some pigment on there. Then we've got this dome structure which is a bluey green. So what I'm going to do is to put blue and green together over the top to get the color I want. And spoiler alert, I certainly will be using water on this because I like the effects it gives. A bit of a cupola there. How many colors I can use since I have them in the set. Then for the trees, back with the green again. This is the lighter of the greens. Do all the trees at once actually because. Again, it's a quick sort of sketch, sort of thing that you might do if you're sitting out looking at it. And all you'd need with you for this is a water brush to, to get the effect that I'm after here today. I think that's about it. What else is, might be green? That might be green, since there's trees in it. That's not going to be green, that's going to be grey. There's one grey, but there's also a black, so we can deal with that that way. At the moment, the idea is just to get some colour down and we go from there. And we can sort out what happens in the rest of it afterwards. So this is quite unlike my favourite five. This In this sketch, I'm actually endeavouring to use as many as possible. And you know what? I've done it again. I don't know. Something's obviously gone bang in my brain. I'm right-handed, yet I will invariably work right to left. It is ridiculous. And at 55 years old, I ought to know better. There you go. Apparently, you never learn just in case you were wondering. Here we are again on the right hand side. So yes, I'm going to smudge most of it. Okay, give some color to those. And under here, sort of anything could be happening under there. So let's put some sort of Odie Nil type shadowy bits there. And here as well. The sun's meant to come from this side. In most of my drawings it does actually. It's just, it's my favourite side for the sun to come from. Okay, so you would get to that. And then, working from the back, I would just go over these with a bit of water. And do what we have been doing. Like that. The dome. As you can see, they kind of meld together to make an inky look, which is quite pleasant. I keep in the same colour family if I can. The pigment 
could be a little bit stronger in places, but it's not a problem. It really isn't. You can layer it up. And actually the upside of that sort of thing is that you get chances, several chances to put the colour down. Okay, just that bit, bit up here. And aiming for quite a loose, water, sort of loose, blended look to this at the minute. Allowing some white space to remain. Done it again, working from the right to the left. Honestly. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. You just can't help some people. It doesn't matter if that colour's on the building because it could be a shadow. And that's a way you can increase your colour palette as well. Thing is, now that I've realised that I work from right to left, even though I'm right-handed and it feels really stupid, I've become extremely self-conscious about it because I'm thinking, you know, there's just no sensible reason for doing it. I'm sure I'll get over it. Worst things happen at sea. It does leave some streaking behind, but I don't mind that because it's kind of part of the texture that I like to have. And here you could use some of what's on the brush just to finish that building. I want it to fade out quite naturally anyway. Okay, so there's our first layer. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to fix it with a, just a spray fixative. And um, there's all sorts of options there. Um, I go into detail with pastels like that on my Patreon. So if you want to know anything about that sort of thing, do have a look over there because, you know, more time and more scope and I've got more things to say about stuff like that. But I shall see you in a second and show you how I might finish a picture like this. Right, so it's all dry and it's fixed. So the next thing I would be looking to do is to find shadows and things like that. And I'm going to have a look at my brush pen, my Ecoline brush pen, this is warm grey, and see if that will do the job. So under there, it's a little bit too subtle to be fair. Let us swap that up to the Tombow N49. Again, they haven't taken the trouble, that's better. It's probably a little bit too much better. So we need something in between these things really. Yeah, that's a little bit darker than I would actually like. So what have we got here? Try the Warm Grey 3 in the Faber-Castell Gold Faber Aqua Dual Marker. That's better. I just, I need a bit of shade, but not lines of shade. So, there again. Probably come back with the other one as well, but at the moment, this is better. Under there, and on there as well. We only need a bit. Then a black coloured pencil. You could also use your black pencil in the pastel pencil. So let's have a look at that first. Yep, this works beautifully. And I love the way it goes over what I've dried already. This is such a conglomeration of all the things I've seen here in Europe in public buildings. So what have we got here? We might have... one of those there why not and we can find something quite nice color this one here Let's give that roof a bit of definition big that up a bit bit more there 
and so forth. And then where I would go for a coloured pencil is in the trees, my Caran d'Ache Gold Ochre. And it goes beautifully over the top of the pastel pencils. This is one of my go-to colours. If you have a look on my favourite fives when I do Caran d'Ache, this is one of them. Love this colour. Still working right to left. I don't know. I give up. Do write in if you've got any suitable diagnoses. Um, Forest is my dark green favourite. And again, it just bigs up some of these areas. And what I love about it, and I have also a fav favourite five in these Derwent Light Fast Pencils, which is up on my channel. I'll pop some links in and you can follow them if you would like to. Um, and this one is another favourite for this sort of thing. It can be a grey, brown, br grey, green. It's just really, really um, versatile. And I don't want to remove the pastel marks. I actually love those, these textures that I'm getting. But I just want to go over the top as well with the pencil. This one is my black Caran d'Ache. Again, suitable for sharpening up some lines and putting some detail in. This one over here, let's work on that one a bit. Just a couple of little windows. Again, it's one of these things where you can see it's a town and so forth but it doesn't have to be realistic. It just has to be believable. Now, what we do need here to help with its believability are some people. So I'll go back to my Tombow and just draw some carrots. So bride, bride wide there. I might get it out in a minute. And a head on the top. They can be doing things. You don't want them too big. Just indistinct people who might be doing things in the town and like I said when you draw people in the distance all you have to draw is a carrot like that with a head on you can then add arms and feet and so forth and it'll give you the impression that there are actually people there without you going into a lot of detail drawing them this has come from the fact that I don't like drawing people so you have to find out ways of doing things because sometimes you need people in a picture um, I don't know that I would do a hell of a lot more to that. I think um, just a little bit there. Yeah, I think that's the sort of picture I would be trying to achieve with a pastel pencil and colour pencil combo. Like I said, as you've seen, I've used some other markers as well. And um, yeah, this is what comes of that basically what i love about them is like i said the texture you can still see the texture but the water over the top of it has sort of washed it out here and there and made it a little bit more um blended almost as if you know you're getting the same effect with that as you get with the water with these water soluble markers so you could leave those out again if you were outside working in on plein air for example all you would need are the pastel pencils a water brush and a couple of colored pencils that you just can't bear to live without and yeah you can color in with those and get the same sort of painterly effects right i do hope you enjoyed that thank you so much to lightwish for your generous offer of these pencils and I'm so pleased to have had the opportunity to test them that's been absolutely amazing I do love them and I would recommend them actually and I can see myself using them a lot in my mixed media practice in different ways so um yeah so thank you so much for giving me that opportunity if you like what you've seen don't forget to like and subscribe as I said at the beginning and also if you want to see more of my artwork and would like to learn how to sketch with mixed media uh, materials please do consider joining my patreon it's um you know there's lots and lots of stuff over there to look at and a friendly bunch of people to do it with as well so it's all very nice and I post every Friday um something interesting to do with this either a tutorial 
um, I'm actually planning a book review for this week. I've got some favourite books that I'd like to share. So there's something different happening all the time. And I I hope it's, I think it's value for money. Do let me know if you think otherwise, but I think it's good value because I've kept it quite cheap as well. We all have to pay the gas bill first, don't we? Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll see you there. Otherwise, I shall see you next time. And uh, yeah, so do look out for Light Wish Naomi when you're choosing pastel pencils because they're pretty damn good, actually. All right, thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.